With sales plummeting, is it time for Chevy to kill off the Camaro? Again. Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to Shifting Lanes. My name's Chad, and today we are talking about an American automotive staple, and that is the pony car, or the muscle car, depends on how you want to look at it. I tested a Challenger a few years ago and absolutely loved the old school charm of it. Hell, I own a Mustang and love pretty much everything about it. The rumble of the V8, the howl, the manual transmission, the rear wheel drive, the simplicity of it. I love everything there is to love about these cars. And that brings me to the third member of the American Pony Car Triumvirate, and that is the Camaro. Now, before we get too far into this video, I wanna make it very, very clear. Yes, I am a Mustang owner, but that does not mean I hate anything with a bow tie on it. Far from it. I've tested more than a few Camaros and I love the way these cars drive. I love the LS engine. Camaros are an awesome vehicle, which is why it actually pains me to ask the following question. With some truly dismal sales recently, have we reached a point where Chevy should actually consider killing off one of its most iconic nameplates in the Camaro. But before we get into any of that, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, consider giving it a like. If you're new to the channel and wanna find your way back, consider subscribing with notifications on. That way you get all of the Shifting Lanes content as we release it. And lastly, before we dive into the meat of today's video, let me know down in the comments below what your favorite pony car is. Are you a Challenger guy? Are you a Mustang guy like me? Or do you love the Camaro? Let me know down below. I look forward to reading them. Pony cars. They tick pretty much all the boxes for the American gearhead. They're fast, they have brash exteriors, they sound epic, and they're affordable. The undisputed king of the pony car has been the Mustang. The Mustang created the segment and with a few exceptions has owned the space ever since. Of the big three, the Mustang is the only one to never go out of production. Ford has dominated sales so much with the Mustang that it came as a rather large shock to the automotive community when Dodge sold more Challengers in the second quarter of 2021. This becomes even more shocking when you consider the fact that the current Challenger platform is 13 years old. By comparison, and in terms of pony cars, the Mustang is a thoroughly modern vehicle. The Gen 3 Coyote is a high revving, double overhead cam, direct injected V8. The Mustang is lighter than the Challenger and boasts a fully independent rear suspension. Meanwhile, the Challenger is an old platform that utilizes old tech. It still uses a basic low revving pushrod V8 and it has a solid rear axle. But with all that being said, you shouldn't look at these things as detriments to the Challenger. Sure, the engine doesn't rev very high, but it still makes a glorious noise. It makes a ton of torque. And sure, you have a live rear axle in the rear, but you know what those are really good at? Hooking up and going fast as hell in a straight line, which the Challengers do very, very well. In fact, they it brings you to a bygone era. It makes you feel like you can go race from light to light without worry of spending the rest of your life in prison. However, all that being said, the Challenger's been around for 13 years and the Mustang has, which is the most modern of the group, has basically outsold it every quarter pretty much since the Challenger came back into existence. What is different about Q2 in 2021 that allowed the Challenger to finally outsell the Mustang? Simply put, Ford is getting hammered by the chip shortage. Yes, this is affecting all three companies, but an argument could be made that it hit Ford the hardest. Ford has even stopped production on some of their models, including the Mustang. Things have gotten so bad for the Mustang that the Mach-E, an electric crossover and not an actual real Mustang, no matter how many horse badges they put on it, outsold the actual Mustang that we know and love. Things actually get worse for Ford when you look at the pickup truck segment. Ford has absolutely dominated full-size pickup truck sales for pretty much ever. And yet, in Q2, they fell to third in sales behind Ram and the Silverado. That is a big Big blow to a company like Ford and especially the F-150. With all that being said, it is safe to say the Mustang will bounce back. Supply shortages, while fairly alarming in the short term, will not last forever. The truly alarming thing is just how far Camaro sales have dropped. They have been hit with the same production delays due to the chip shortage that Ford has. But in Q2, Chevy only sold 2,792 Camaros. Meanwhile, Ford sold nearly that many Mustangs in June alone. Camaro sales are down a staggering 58.2% compared to last year. And in terms of market share, Camaros only make up 9% of pony car sales. Sales are down nearly 60% and only 9% market share. Those are some truly 
grim numbers, especially if you're a Camaro fan. And it's not like the Camaro is some clapped out model that is well past its prime that is in desperate need of a refresh. It's a fairly modern vehicle with some fantastic engines, and yet they are just not selling. And as the Challenger keeps on showing us, having the most modern vehicle simply does not matter. Buyers want a retro inspired, loud, brash, throwback to a bygone era, and the Challenger does that better than any other car out there. Chevy says they're keeping the Camaro around until 2026, but if sales keep dropping, it might not make it that far. All of this begs the question. The Camaro is a blast from the past with modern tech and amenities, and yet sales are worryingly down. What is the cause? Part of it is down to the chip shortage. Due to this shortage, Chevy has shut down the plant that builds Camaros more than once. Chevy's full-size pickup truck, the Silverado, is being sold without some features just to keep overall sales up. And production on the new Corvette is not meeting demand. So you could forgive Chevy for not making the Camaro a top priority, especially when you consider the crossover crazed world we currently live in. The Camaro occupies a special place in many American gearheads' hearts. You probably know someone who's owned a Camaro or at the very least wanted one very badly. If you are an American and and you like pony cars though, you have to pick a side. Many pick Camaro, rightfully so, because it is an American icon. The Camaro already died once, but was brought back to life. It would be sad to see it go again, not to mention, would it ever come back if Chevy killed it off a second time? Now, if we expect the Mustang to bounce back sales-wise when it comes to the chip shortage, because let's face it, it's not gonna last forever, it's safe to assume the Camaro will do the same. However, the Camaro it's been number three for a while now, and 9% market share is, is pretty abysmal, if I'm being honest. There's two ways to look at this. The first way is kind of a nostalgic, blast from the past kind of way of looking at it. The second way is more of a logical decision. What is best for Chevy as a business? Should Chevy allocate resources to a car that just isn't selling at the cost of the cars that are? Keep in mind, the chip shortage or not, the Silverado still outsold their main rival, the F-150 in Q2. That is by no means a small deal. Also, let's look at where the automotive world is going. Sad to say it, but the days of the V8 powered monsters we love are numbered. Look at Dodge's parent company, Stellantis. The th Thunderous Dodge V8 as we know it is going to be replaced with the dull whine of an electric motor. Would it not make sense for Chevy to follow suit? A sizable chunk of money could be saved by killing the Camaro now and focusing on R&D for an all electric version in the future. However, killing the Camaro comes with more weight than just normal cars. There is a huge Camaro fan base out there. This isn't a Cruze or a Cobalt or any other boring car Chevy has made. This is the Camaro. The Camaro name is arguably the second most recognizable name Chevy has, second only to the legend that is the Corvette. I can continue to ramble on on whether or not I think it's best for Chevy to A, keep going and just hope when the chip shortage is over that sales bounce back, or kill it off for right now, spend the money on R&D and bring the Camaro back as an epic EV down the line. The simple fact of the matter is, is that Chevy has reached a crossroad when it comes to the Camaro. At some points in a business's life, you have to make a decision, in very many cases, a tough decision on a brand. I think Chevy has reached this crossroad with the Camaro. I really do hope they make the right choice. I don't wanna see the Camaro go away and not come back. I wanna see Chevy make the right choice to ensure that we have the Camaro for as long as humanly possible. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I wanna take a minute. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna follow us on social media, it's at Shifting Lanes. Right now, it's tough for the Camaro. I really, really hope Camaro bounces back because there's no fun in owning a Mustang if you have nobody to play with. And yes, the challenge is great in a straight line, but if you want sportiness, it's Mustang and Camaro. I really hope Chevy makes the right decision to keep the Camaro around for a long time, but what do you think? What do you think is the best possible route for Chevy to go to ensure the long-term survival of the Camaro? Let me know in the comments below. But for this video, that's a wrap. I'll catch you next time.